Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today I just wanted to do a little first impressions with you guys. I ended up needing some more uh, paper, so I ordered some paper from Blick and I got my usual Canson XL because I love that for just doing quick experiments and not feeling too precious about my paper. I can just use kind of as much as I want without freaking out about it. But I also saw this other paper there, which is um, reasonably priced too. I believe it's around 31 cents a page and the um, Canson XL is around 26 cents so they're pretty similar price but this new one is uh, called the Fabriano Fat Pad and it doesn't actually have that on the label <laughs> but it, that's what it's called in the store so um, I ended up getting that and it has 60 pages and it's the same GSM as the Canson so 300 GSM and it's cold press watercolor and this one contains 25% cotton so the Canson XL is 100% cellulose and this one is 75% cellulose with 25% cotton. So that really intrigued me and I wanted to see if it behaved a lot different to my XL. I do have um, some 100% cotton papers and they do behave a lot different to the XL. So I wanted to see if there was kind of a balance between those, just having a little bit of cotton or whether it's just kind of the same as the Canson. Um, also, uh, I looked everywhere online because I wanted to see if it had the same texture as another Fabriano pad that I have. And I do love that texture, but it's really dominant. And so I couldn't find any information about it. So I thought I'll just give it a go. I'll use it up anyway if it does. But um, I wanted to be able to get it and show you guys so that you knew too, if you're looking for this, um, exactly the texture of the paper. So let's open it up and have a look. Okay, so let's look at the texture. Uh, yes, so it is very textured, just like my other Fabriano uh, pad. So it has that same machine sort of texture here that's very uh, pattern-like and is very sort of apparent when you're painting. Um, let me show you a couple of pieces that I did on this paper just so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's a couple of recent paintings that I de did and um, I do this technique where I just sort of very lightly go over it with an oil pencil here and you can really see that texture like it's super apparent the texture and I really like that I love that you're able to do that and sort of pick up on those textures um, and the when it granulates it kind of falls into those patterns here so it really does look beautiful so I'm not unhappy with this it's just um, very different to the XL so you can see with this one too actually with the granulation it does half your job for you it gives you all that texture it's beautiful but it is definitely very uh, visible and if you don't like that then this is definitely not the paper for you um, so just to compare it to the Canson XL so this one here is done on Canson XL and you can see it um, it definitely still has a texture I'm not sure if that's picking up on camera you can really see a texture to it but uh, you know where the paint falls here you can get some really smooth lines it's not the dominant character of the painting like it doesn't really show that much on there yeah so that's really interesting I assumed it would be the same texture but I wasn't 100% sure but um, it was such a good price I thought I would just give it a go anyway and it's gonna be great for lots more experimentation um, yeah, so let's get into some a couple of little tests uh, just to see how it differs from the Canson.
Okay, so I did a bunch of different things on both of these papers and it's pretty much just things that I like to do in my art. Um, I'm not sure that it's terribly technical <laughs> comparison, but I just wanted to compare these two to see how they, um, they acted differently. This one I just used a granulating paint. So this is Daniel Smith Sodalite and I wanted to see how it flowed and how it granulated. Um, they both had pretty good flow. Uh, and you can see the granulation here again because of this texture it's going to fall into that um, texture a bit more then this one was interesting this was um, this is Roman Schmoll Misty Morning and it's just really interesting how the color separated this is the Fabriano one so it really separated out into um, the different colors there there's a lot more pink in this one and it settled into those little grooves in the paper whereas the Canson XL is kind of much less interesting actually um, I think that was user error there I just dropped a little bit of water at the end but the separation is really different it kind of the blue sort of settled into the page and you don't really see a lot of the pink whereas here and it could be just you know the amount of paint I picked up as well but just that settling pattern is really really different on both of those and then we have the lift test so this is the uh, I think Turner Elizarin Crimson here which is pretty easy to lift and they both did really well um, I think the Fabriano feels less affected by the scrubbing so I scrubbed it a little bit with a brush to pick up some of that paint um, the Canson is a little more rough there so a little more damaged when it picked up the paint I mean they both lifted really well but that's just something to consider maybe the cotton content in here made it a little more durable um, but yeah they're both easy to lift and then I dropped a drop of sepia watercolor liquid in there um, and that spread pattern is really quite different for both of them on the Fabriano it really went to the edges of here so I, I put in the same kind of the same amount of water I tried to and the same amount of watercolor uh, ink on here so or liquid watercolor so it really kind of spread out a little bit more and then settled a little further away from the center whereas this one here on the Canson just acted a little differently it didn't reach as far to the edges of the circle so I'm not sure if that's the cotton sort of wicking it away it sort of went further I think and then these ones here just Indian ink they acted pretty similar and then we get into the Neo Color 2s here. So this is this here. And they both lifted pretty well out of the paper. I think the Canson uh, was a little better at dissolving the crayon there. It tended to stay in the texture of the paper for the Fabriano. And of course, on the dry uh, application here, you can see that beautiful texture. And then we have the Albic Drua watercolor pencil in Kaput Mochum. So the same kind of thing here. I didn't have to scrub too hard. Uh, you definitely pick up on the texture more on the dry and the wet here. And then we have the Potter's Pink here. So I just wanted to do a granulation test to see how it granulated. You can see that this is just a really organic collection of pigment there. And then this one definitely falls into the texture of the paper. So that's the main difference and the main thing that I'm aware of with this different textured paper because this is so uh, such a machined texture you're gonna get that recurring pattern there um, what else have we got we've got some fountain pen ink here so this is a extra fine nib on this and it worked great on both textures of paper I thought it might skip a little bit on the Fabriano but it worked fine we have an alcohol marker which definitely feathered a little more on the Fabriano compared to the Canson here. The Canson dealt with that a little better because of the cellulose, I guess. The cotton in here is sort of um, drawing it in a little bit more and feathering it. And then the last one is just this Payne's Grey by Roman Schmoll, just doing a water drop test to see how it spread. And they act pretty similarly, I think. So overall, I really enjoyed this Fabriano fat pad. Um, I think it's really good value and the cotton content in this one I think does make a difference. Um, I noticed when I was working with the Alizarin Crimson 
and the especially the that and the Payne's gray they kind of sat on the surface of the paper a little bit more and didn't get sucked into it straight away so it gives you more time to work um, this could be a negative or a positive depending on how you work but um, I definitely felt like it uh, dealt with water a little differently than the Canson XL. Okay guys I think that does it for this quick look at the Fabriano watercolor fat pad. Um, I think if you like texture then this is a really good pad for you and it's uh, pretty cheap so you could give it a go. Um, yeah so thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye!